Everyone working in the office was in turmoil. They were talking about some Charlene who wanted to find out what had happened. However, they didn't know why she was back so early. Charlene, a famous woman who was nicknamed the devil in the public relations world, walked into the office. Charlene had founded a public relations and media company. She was Xiao Hai's special client, was taken off the set, and she went on strike. Some man in the office said he was refusing her request, to which Charlene became very nervous. She didn't understand how, after so many searches, he had so easily decided to say no. The girl was the press release organizer from the feminist attack of Lou's victims and hiring haters to criticize the despicable men. During the day, Charlene was known as the Link Queen. But in reality, the girl was an ardent fan of the novels. In front of people, she was a strong and femme fatale, but at home, she was gentle and romantic. Recently, Charlene had become obsessed with a new European-style romance novel. And three hours later, the kindest Prince Anthony became the devil and was killed by his brother Derek in the name of protection. Charlene was very upset by this. The girl was overcome with empathy. She realized how miserable Anthony really was. In the novel, Queen Audrey and Princess Alice gave birth almost simultaneously, giving birth to two princes, Derek and Anthony. When the princes were born, the sky over the kingdom of Louis became clear on one side and filled with darkness on the other. The prophet foretold that this was a symbol that one prince was on the bright side and the other was shrouded in darkness. Anthony was born with multicolored eyes. He became the son of the devil who would bring misfortune and great tragedy. All the maids in the house knew this and disliked the baby from birth. Anthony was called a prince, but he was always mistreated. The poor boy became an outcast and was bullied from an early age. He didn't know what affection and love were. The girls were whispering among themselves in the street. One of them claimed that Anthony was very strange. The girl's mother told her that his eyes were the eyes of the devil. The other girls added that if the queen had not been so kind, he would have died long ago. Of all events, young Anthony experienced inhuman pain once a month. To survive in the palace, Anthony needed to change and hide his shyness deep within himself. He realized himself that he had to stay strong. After a while, Anthony met the white moonlight of his life. That light was Princess Syl. Anthony fell in love with her no matter what. He wanted to protect the princess at all costs. Unfortunately, the princess's lover was different. He was a true hero, Prince Derek. For the princess's happiness, Anthony risked his life to save Derek. He saved him, but fell into the hands of the devil Aaron. Aaron's devil used brutal methods to turn Anthony into an inhuman killing machine. Eventually, buried in darkness, Anthony was killed by Derek. In shackles of ice and snow, Anthony ended his miserable life. That was the brutal truth. Charlene kept thinking, if she could be by Anthony's side, she could control his life and make him a king. Unfortunately, Charlene's peaceful sleep was interrupted by someone's voice asking her to wake Amelia soon. Charlene jumped up from the bed, but looked at her hands in horror. Suddenly, her hands were small. Without realizing it, the girl suddenly became a child. The maid entered the room where Charlene was. She called her by the name Amelia. The maid added that she had brought her a new dress because she needed to get ready soon, for the selection of a companion for the princes was about to begin. Charlene suddenly realized that she was in Ruth's manor. Amelia from the novel had a sister named Martha, and Amelia herself was only a minor character who didn't carry much significance. The maid confirmed the girl's words, adding that she had been living here since she was born. Charlene realized that she wasn't actually asleep, but found herself in a book. The girl decided to pull herself together and help poor Anthony. Since she was here, she must fulfill her promise and make him king. According to the book's description, the Russ family was a declining aristocracy. Martha was the child of the second wife of the head of the family, while Amelia was born of the first wife and was not very popular. Originally, the Russ family was not allowed to run for companion to the princes, but the wife took the initiative to give Amelia as Anthony's companion in exchange for Martha's chance to run for Prince Derek's companion. Upon leaving the room, Charlene discovered her novel younger sister Martha in the hallway. The girl immediately began bragging about her gorgeous outfit, and losing control of herself, took a swing at calling her sister ugly. Charlene was not confused and grabbed Martha's arm. The girl immediately ordered Charlene to let her go, but the girl replied that Martha better not mess with her. 
The girl said that if she hit Martha now, no one would do anything to her since they were alone in the hallway. Leaving her sister alone, Charlene ordered her to follow her, for everyone was already waiting for them. The selection of a companion for the princes was officially open. The candidates were asked to come forward. There was a long tradition in Louis's royal family that every prince should choose a companion from a noble family, which was also the highest honor for the family. In the throne room, Queen Audrey was sitting in the throne room, looking at the possible future companions with all the attention she could muster. Suddenly, Charlene found Anthony among the others, who was still small. The girl wanted to hug and caress him. It seemed to the girl that Anthony's appearance was beautiful. In the novel, the queen had long ago ordered him to choose Amelia. But the so-called free choice was nothing more than a mere privilege. Turning her head to Anthony, the queen ordered him to choose first, but there was no hint of joy on the boy's face. Some girl in the crowd began to beg Anthony not to choose him. She was more willing to die than to be the companion of the devil's son. Suddenly, Derek stepped forward, asking his mother to let him choose first. The queen immediately smiled and asked Derek to show her who he had chosen. The boy immediately jabbed his finger at one of the girls, but it was Charlene who was the one who didn't want it at all. Anthony chose her since Charlene wasn't looking at him at all, but at his brother. Charlene immediately said no, shouting out that she was choosing Anthony. Everyone in the audience was immediately surprised. Immediately, Charlene began to doubt her words as she insulted the royal family in public. She began to think that she was finished. The queen was so angered by the girl's words that she rose from her throne and asked what the girl meant. Charlene, to begin a cunning manipulation, a skill she had honed flawlessly over the years, collapsed to the floor and said she didn't deserve to be Derek's companion. Those who were, were in power, were most afraid of someone undermining their authority and taking the initiative to show weakness. The weak were best controlled, and they despised such the most. On her knees, Charlene said that Prince Derek was the most noble prince of the Ludovic kingdom, and she was just a little girl not from a family of four nobles. Little Prince Derek rolled his eyes and told the little girl to shut up since he was already getting bored. The queen suspected that the girl was doing a great job of pretending and trying to manipulate. Covering her face with a fan, the queen asked what the girl's name was. Charlene replied that her name was Amelia. Charlene knew that the queen was the most ruthless person in the kingdom. She didn't expect to be fighting for her life so soon. The queen threw a haughty look at the girl and said that no matter how much she pretended, she was publicly rebuffing the king. Charlene said that she is very nervous, and yet she knows what she should do. She will always follow the queen's orders and dare not think of anything wrong. While saying her words, Charlene could not take her eyes off Anthony. The queen ordered the girl to stand up. Since she was still young, she would spare her out of mercy. Audrey guessed that Charlene had found out that she had been sacrificed for Anthony. It was so stupid, but she was still obedient. Charlene bowed even more, thanking the queen. She wanted the queen to believe that she was an obedient pawn in her hands. The queen turned to Anthony and said she thought the girl was a great match for him. She asked the boy to let her be his companion. The boy was greatly embarrassed. He didn't know if he was lucky or if they were trying to play some kind of joke on him again. He meekly agreed with the queen. Charlene realized that things were bad. After what had just happened, Anthony must have thought she was a spy the queen had set up to spy on him. The butler escorted Charlene to the second prince's castle, which amazed her with its size. The girl immediately felt at home. The butler smiled involuntarily and said that he thought she would get lost in the palace. The butler scratched his head and admitted that the palace used to have many decorations, but they all had to be removed. Charlene wasn't embarrassed by that and said it was beautiful as it was. If the castle was empty, she could still decorate it. Looking at the two laughing boys, the haughty castle maid couldn't help herself and proclaimed them all fools. Hearing the maid's words out of the corner of her ear, Charlene asked her to come closer. She was only a child in the novel, but her aura was incredibly strong and bold. Charlene swung around and gave the maid a hard slap for her words. The maid started rubbing her reddened cheek and asked how the little girl dared to slap her. Charlene, however, replied that she was the prince's companion and the girl was only a servant. She had insulted her, so she had every right to punish her severely. The servant girl named Rose was cruel and mean in the novel. If Charlene wouldn't put her in her place now, she would bring a lot of trouble in the future. 
The girl turned her back to Rosa and ordered her to take her luggage and carry it to her room, as she herself was very tired for that. Turning from side to side, there was no way Charlene could sleep. Anthony refused to eat with her at the same table during dinner, so she had to take the initiative and let him know her sincerity. Finally realizing this, Charlene came running into Anthony's room, complaining that she couldn't fall asleep alone because of the darkness. She obsessively asked Anthony if she could sleep with him. Anthony got out of bed and interrogated the girl. He reminded her that there was a lamp in her room, and if she wanted, she could turn it on and not be afraid of the dark. He also asked how she had managed to get into his chambers in the first place. Charlene lay down next to Anthony without permission and relished the fact that he already knew a lot about her. But Anthony modestly replied that he had just guessed. Anthony suggested that Charlene return to her room soon, but she refused and asserted that she would sleep with him. The boy admitted that he wasn't comfortable when he was alone either. Charlene clung even tighter to Anthony and said that when the two of them were together, she was at ease and not afraid of anything. Getting comfortable, Charlene said she would sleep and advised Anthony to shove off soon too. Sighing tiredly, Anthony said goodnight to the girl. He wondered if he had the power to get people on his side. If Charlene wasn't the queen's man, then maybe they could be friends. Waking up early in the morning, Charlene immediately began to scrutinize her prince. She marveled at how long his eyelashes were. Anthony began to talk in his sleep, and Charlene immediately began to soothe him by gently stroking his shoulder. Suddenly, the butler burst into the room, shouting at the top of his lungs that the Royal Academy had sent him a message saying that a lesson had been scheduled for that day, and Professor Motero would be teaching it in person. Overjoyed, Anthony immediately woke up and asked a butler named Theo to bring him his clothes. Professor Motero was one of the five great magicians of the kingdom. His classes were so rare that Anthony simply couldn't be late for them. Charlene knew that in the novel, Anthony would face a great misfortune in the magic class he was so eagerly awaiting. She had to find a way to save him. Upon meeting Anthony, the maid Rose warned him that His Royal Highness the Prince was coming soon, so Anthony needed to hurry. Charlene couldn't believe her ears. Derek wasn't supposed to come to Anthony's house in the novel since there was no such plot. Was this really all about her? Waving to his brother, Derek shouted happily that he had come to escort him to class for his magic class with Professor Motherow. Anthony, realizing that a visit from his sibling would not bring him joy, humbly bowed and wished him a good morning. Derek hugged his younger brother and asked him to just call him brother. He added that he didn't need that formality from his closest relative. Fear began to seep into Anthony's eyes. He remembered the words of the queen who had called him just a bug in the gutter. She had always told him that he would never compare to her son Derek. In an attempt to curry favor with the future king, Rose had said that if he could become king, he would no longer worry about fame and fortune. Derek paid no attention to her words. Scratching his cheek, Derek asked where his brother's companion was, but the man asked why he was looking for her, what he needed her for so badly. Making a big face, the first prince said that Charlene was his brother's companion, and if she wasn't in class, it would be considered a dereliction of my duty. Suddenly appearing, Charlene asked Derek if he was going to help His Royal Highness Prince Anthony punish his companion for being late. The first prince immediately became concerned, and Charlene once again praised herself for such excellent manipulation. Now that Charlene was with the rest of the class, Anthony offered to go to class. Professor Motero hated it more than anything when people were late for his classes. An old man with a monocle over his eye greeted the princes and said that today he would be teaching them how to make a potion, a sample of which was on the table. This potion could quickly restore strength to even the most infirm person. In the novel, the professor was an extremely hypocritical snob. To please the queen, he gave Anthony a potion, after which he lost the ability to distinguish between tastes. Charlene remembered that the expired material in the novel was called a coin made of fish scales. She immediately went in search of it. With a keen eye, she found a golden coin with a print that looked like fish scales. She took it in her hands and immediately hid it to prevent all the subsequent events that were described in the novel. Taking some herb in his hands, Professor Mathero asked the princes to examine his instructions and finish the potion as soon as possible. Suddenly, Charlene interrupted the old man by saying that she saw a fly in the classroom. It would be very bad if it got into the potion. Looking up arrogantly, the professor informed Charlene that she was in the Royal Academy, not the village. 
he doubted the existence of any fly that could interfere in any way. Not about to end the play, Charlene pointed her finger at the ceiling, saying that the fly was sitting right on top of it. Making sure that Professor Mathero's attention was diverted to the non-existent fly, Charlene quickly tossed an uncorrupted coin in place of the one she had hidden. Finally coming to his senses, the professor realized that there was no fly. He asked Charlene if she intended to try to disrupt the current potions class. Charlene purposely squeezed out her tears to portray all innocence. She apologized in a squeaky voice, adding that she was probably just imagining things. With a wave of his hand, the professor grudgingly ordered her to go to her seat and not to cause any more trouble that might disrupt the class. Charlene returned to her seat next to Anthony. The boy, not taking his eyes off the potion making, asked what she wanted to do. It turns out that he had seen everything. Anthony was much smarter than the version of him that was described in the novel. He was becoming more and more interesting to little Charlene. Watching Charlene and Anthony talking to each other, Derek became involuntarily nervous. He began to feel feelings similar to jealousy and malaise at the fact that all of the girl's attention was focused on his brother. An hour later, the potion was completed. Professor Motero offered to test its effectiveness with him. The two students poured the prepared potion into small glass flasks and began preparing to taste it. The professor drank the potion first, glancing at Charlene with the corner of his eye. He mumbled that she was a thorn in the side of her highness. If she knew what he would do to her if he wished, she would definitely recognize his loyalty. The boys drank their potions, feeling no letdown thanks to Charlene. She told the professor that if he wanted to hurt her prince, then let her let him upset him. With a glow in his eyes, Derek recognized that the potion he had prepared was indeed excellent. It instantly cheered him up. Suddenly, the professor felt a cold sweat on his face. He realized that the taste of the potion was wrong. He thought he had mixed up a flake coin. The professor ran out the door trying to fix the effects of the wrong potion. One last time, he shouted out that today's lesson was over. Being satisfied with his potion, Anthony didn't understand what had happened to the professor. Derek, too, recognized that the professor had behaved rather strangely. In his mind, the boy realized that Charlene knew exactly what had happened to Madero. Smiling sweetly at his brother, Derek asked if he could talk to Charlene in person, since he really wanted to discuss something with her. Grabbing Charlene's hand, Anthony ran out of the classroom with a serious face, leaving Anthony alone with the prepared potion and the rest of the alchemical ingredients. Charlene didn't understand what Prince Derek wanted to tell her. Did he really realize that the incident with the professor was her doing? The prince threw a glance at Charlene, asserting that it was time for her to stop pretending. He knew she was the one who had swapped the professor's scales for Anthony's. That was what had caused the problems with the Mathero potion. Charlene was abruptly seized by panic. She realized that his queen would want to question Professor Mathero. The girl hadn't expected Derek to have such a keen eye. Charlene made a sweet, innocent face and repeated Derek's words about setting her up. She said that if she hadn't changed the coin, Prince Anthony would have been hurt. The girl added that the professor's materials must be good. She told Derek that he had just questioned the professor's ingredients and claimed that he wanted to hurt the prince. Prince, however, immediately began to make excuses that he didn't mean it. Charlene said that Derek shouldn't accuse the professor of his own volition. The girl went back to practicing her manipulation skills and asked why Prince Derek would so deliberately accuse her. After all, she was just a little girl. The prince's companion, the prince, realizing that he had made a mistake, began apologizing to the girl, trying to wipe away her tears. He asked her to forget his words and admitted that it was his fault. Through her tears, Charlene's smile began to creep through. In her thoughts, she asked Derek how he could let her outplay him so easily. She promised to show everyone what a social connection queen was. The girl wiped her tears and asked Derek not to do it again. She said that if that was the end of it, she would be the first to go from here. The first prince didn't expose her on the spot and asked about her attire on the sidelines, not in public. Still, he was being kind. Leaving Derek, Charlene walked out of the garden and saw Anthony watching her from behind the wall. Sighing tiredly, Anthony wondered how the palace could be so noisy. Charlene was happy to see her prince. After all, he had come here because he was afraid that Derek might do her harm. He secretly cared for her, and Charlene really appreciated that. The girl grabbed the prince's hand and dragged him somewhere. 
Anthony immediately asked where she was in such a hurry, but Charlene said that she had a surprise for him. Evening came. Above the second prince's castle, the stars began to glow, filtering through the clouds. Sitting at the table in the castle, Anthony asked Charlene if he could finally open his eyes. The prince's childhood had been horrible, so he was full of vigilance and uncertainty about everything. Anthony removed the blindfold and saw Charlene in front of him, who was holding a berry cake that she had baked herself, just for Anthony, with her eyes lighting up. It was the first time anyone had ever given Anthony a gift. Charlene offered the boy a taste of the cake at last. He took a fork and poked a small piece and almost brought it to his mouth, but stopped abruptly and said he didn't want any. He thought the cake was poisoned. But also, Anthony knew that if Charlene didn't change the coins for potions, he would be in trouble. The girl had helped him, but that didn't mean she was on his side. Maybe she had other intentions. Charlene touched Anthony's forehead and told him not to frown or he might get wrinkles. Anthony moved away from Charlene and said he didn't like sweets at all. But the girl moved back closer to Anthony and said he was lying. There were no kids who didn't like sweets. Anthony didn't stand for it and slapped Charlene's hand and said that was enough. The boy's eyes were full of disgust. Charlene didn't understand why he suddenly had such hostility towards her. Interrupting the two, the knights entered the room, saying that Prince Anthony was obliged to follow them. Anthony turned sharply in their direction, but still obediently followed them. At first, Charlene couldn't understand what was happening, but then she realized that today was the 1st of July. At the beginning of every month, Anthony had to suffer. As Charlene stepped outside, she saw all sorts of beams starting to light up from the castle. This was not supposed to be Anthony's fate. In fact, according to the novel, Anthony was the one who was born with the power of light and Derek with the power of darkness. But Queen Audrey, through magic, recognized in advance that the power of darkness was raging in the fetus in her belly. And Princess Alice's child at that time had the purest power of light. So to save her child, the queen used magic to forcibly transfer the dark power from Derek's body to Anthony's body. Anthony's power became intertwined with the dark power, which is why it changed. Ludovic's kingdom did not know what heterochromia was, so the newborn Anthony was mistaken for the son of the devil and his biological mother was imprisoned. The fate of the two princes was altered, but Charlene made a promise to herself that she would help the prince get his own back. The first day of every month, the queen locked Anthony in a room with her and performed an ancient magical ritual. There was no way she could understand how the power of light in a child's body could stop becoming more and more pure. Anthony fell to the ground and the queen hovered over him, saying that it was over and he could go back to his room. Queen Audrey said that if Derek didn't give Anthony some of his power every month, he would have been consumed by the power of darkness long ago. Living this lie, Anthony felt he should always be grateful to Prince Derek. After waiting for the boy to leave, the queen held out the magical orb to her assistant, asking her to take it, since she knew what to do with it. She also asked her to make it clean. No one had to know about it. Charlene sat on the steps outside the castle exit and waited for Anthony. It was already so late and Anthony wasn't on the horizon. Could it be that something had gone wrong? Theo, the butler, hovered over Charlene, asking the girl if she was waiting for the prince. The girl asked him when he would be back, for she was worried about him and missed him very much. The butler bowed his head and sympathetically said that actually, on the first day of every month, no one knows when the prince might return. But he also asked the girl not to worry because the prince always attends breakfast the next day. Charlene suddenly jumped up abruptly and said that she knew where Prince Anthony was now. She rushed to the castle and said that he must have decided to spend the night alone again, so she hurried to not leave him alone and to help him. Opening the doors to the closet, Charlene saw a crying Anthony holding a flower gently in his hands. He looked so tired and hurt that the girl wanted to hug him with all her might and comfort him, telling him that everything would be all right in the future. Charlene finally found Anthony. Just as it was written in the novel, the little hiding place the boy was hiding in was the only place in the palace where Anthony could feel safe. Wiping away his tears, Anthony asked Charlene in a trembling voice why he was looking for him. He figured that the girl wanted to make fun of him. Charlene realized that things had gone wrong from the start. Anthony was clearly hostile and distrustful of her. 
but Charlene didn't know what exactly she had done wrong. Anthony clenched his hands into fists and angrily said that he was born to be despised by everyone. Some of the people might have even beaten him, some might have bullied him. But Charlene was the opposite of those people from the beginning. She was close to him, but he didn't like it. To the boy, Charlene's behavior was too gratuitous, as her interaction with him seemed like a ruse to him. It was hard for him to know if this was another bullying move. Charlene realized that the boy was right. Ever since she had come to the castle, she had always thought of herself as a savior. Anthony didn't need any savior. What he craved most was a friend who would walk side by side with him and genuinely care for him. Charlene bowed to Anthony and apologized to him. She wanted to be friends with him, and she didn't want to despise him at all. She wanted the boy to feel her sincerity and concern, to open his heart to her. Now it was all too complicated for her. Charlene shouldn't have used any methods to befriend Anthony. All she had to do to make friends with children was to be sincere and open her heart. The boy came to his senses and wondered if that was really the case. Charlene wanted to take care of him. Charlene approached Anthony and stated that she had been on his side from the beginning. If he had killed someone, she had covered for him right away. If he wanted to set something on fire, she would help him with that. A smile slowly began to form on Anthony's face. He believed the girl's words. Thinking about it, he asked Charlene to tell him who she really was. Knowing about a person depended on what they would say. Anthony realized that since Charlene had helped him so many times, she definitely couldn't be an ordinary child. Charlene hesitated. She didn't know what to say to him. Did she really have to admit that she was a grown woman who came from another world and he was just a boy from a book? He would definitely think she had lost her mind. But if she lied to him, there would definitely be no friendship. Looking into the boy's eyes, the girl said that for some reason she was indeed more developed beyond her years than kids their age. She had more knowledge. Anthony looked away. He thought that the particular reason Charlene had said must have had to do with her mother's early death. Being bullied by her stepmother and stepsister, that was probably what had led her to know so much. His speculation made sense. Charlene put her hand over her heart. No matter how much knowledge she had, she would never use it against Anthony. Finally, Anthony questioned why on earth the girl had chosen him over his brother. To Charlene, Anthony seemed so sweet. His angelic look was made with feeling. She liked that. He was so kind and loving despite the queen's bullying. Over time, Charlene's heart had really grown to love him, and she wanted to travel with him, to worry about him. Charlene smiled awkwardly. It was a complicated and long question for her with a questionable future answer. She might have to spend a lot of time answering it. Charlene gently took Anthony's hand and told him that if that was what he wanted, she would be the person he wanted to go all the way with. She didn't want anyone else to hurt her prince. Finally, after a long time and a lot of effort, the bond between Charlene and Anthony began to grow stronger. The prince trusted his companion and was willing to open up to her completely, in a way he had never done to anyone before. The sun began to rise over the luxurious castle. Its rays filtered through the clouds, illuminating all the flora and fauna around. Looking at Anthony, Charlene asked if he liked his breakfast, since the prince had eaten too little today. Anthony replied that he just wanted the cake that the girl had baked especially for him yesterday. Charlene smiled, saying that yesterday's cake was no longer fresh, so Anthony also had something more nutritious to eat first, and then he would have to go to class. But also, the girl promised that she would bake another even prettier and tastier one tonight. Looking at a smiling Anthony, Charlene realized that the boy's heart was slowly beginning to open to her. It pleased her to no end. Watching the little couple, Theo said that it was the first time he saw how a little prince could be so lively. The girl was indeed a little lucky star for Anthony. Rose listened to the butler. She didn't understand what good it would do to court a second prince. The maid believed that for those who mess with the prince has only one end, and that is not the most favorable. After leaving the castle to get some fresh air, Charlene went into the garden. There were beautiful flowers growing all around. She wanted to pick them to make a flower cake for Anthony. But suddenly she heard someone whimpering nearby. When she came closer, she saw a little maid rubbing her crying eyes. Charlene apologized for disturbing her, but she heard her crying and decided to see if everything was all right. The little maid said that she had suddenly developed a strange illness and was afraid she was about to die. 
Charlene sat down next to her and said that she didn't look bad for a dying person. She asked what her pain was and what was bothering her. The little girl said she had been suffering from stomach pain and weakness for a few days. But Charlene assured her that there was nothing wrong with her and she knew what she was facing. The maid breathed a sigh of relief and thanked Charlene for her help and kindness. But suddenly, Charlene realized that it was that stomach ache and weakness that had caused her to die in the novel. An old legend said that this illness and its effects could break entire curses. But in fact, this legend was false. In the novel, in order to rid Derek of the demonic power, the queen sacrificed Amelia, who was afflicted with this disease. However, this was also false, as there was no demonic aura in Derek's body, but only remnants of the dark power. In the novel, Amelia was only a bargaining chip in the queen's hands. This was also a deterrent for Anthony. Charlene used to spend too much time on the boy and completely forgot about herself. Smiling from now on, the maid presented Charlene with a small basket of flowers and said that she had gathered them just for her. After she washed them, she could use them. Charlene gladly accepted the gift and introduced herself, but also asked what the maid's name was. She replied that her name was Ellie. However, she came to her senses and said that it had been a long time and her sister Noya was still waiting for her. Ellie did not appear in the novella. If she doesn't affect the plot in any way, Charlene might as well be friends with her. However, the glorious thoughts were interrupted by a bad one. She probably wouldn't make friends with anyone, as she might not live to see the end of the story. She was destined to die in three years according to the plot of the novel. Pulling herself together, Charlene headed back to the castle, pondering her age and the fate ahead of her. But suddenly, she bumped foreheads with Prince Derek and fell to the ground. Prince Derek didn't move and said that he was very tired of seeing humiliating moments like this. He also asked if the girl would like his help to get up. Charlene rose to her feet, approached Anthony and took his cheek, asking how his temper could be so irritable. The reason Amelia died in the novel was because of Derek. Derek took hold of his flushed cheek and asked how Charlene knew how to touch him. Laughing, she asked him if he was going to tell the queen about it. Would Prince Derek run to complain to mommy when he was wronged? Because of her experience, Charlene knew anyway, to deal with a spoiled child, you have to express everything to him. The girl moved closer to Derek and asked if his highness wanted to hide under the queen's wing for the rest of his life. Doesn't the prince want to be independent? Derek didn't understand how Charlene could describe all his problems in a few words. He had a look of amazement on his face. Charlene took the prince's hand and told him that he wanted to grow up to be a real man. If he wants others to believe him to be sincere, then let him apologize to everyone. She said he should watch where he's going first and apologize after a confrontation. Looking at Charlene's forehead reddened from the impact, Derek really realized that he had overreacted. Asking Charlene to move closer, Derek touched his palm to her forehead. Immediately, a green light shone at the sight of the bump, which immediately cured all the bruises. It was magic. Derek straightened up and said it was just low-level healing magic. He wasn't talented at it and asked Charlene not to misunderstand him. He just wanted to change what he had done. Charlene almost forgot that she was on the continent of magic. If Anthony wanted to rule the continent, he needed to learn how to control magic. The girl wondered if he knew what stage his magic had reached. After thanking Prince Derek for his help, Charlene straightened up and said that she wouldn't bother him anymore, so she would leave first. She had to hurry back and find out about Anthony's magic level. Derek was a little upset that Charlene had left so quickly. She really wasn't interested in him at all. That evening, when the entire castle was under the cover of night, Charlene was thoughtfully preparing the cake for Anthony that she had promised back in the morning. What Charlene was most concerned about was the question of her death. She was definitely going to have to avoid it somehow. The girl's head was spinning. He had no ideas, no strength, no power. What on earth was she supposed to do to start a rivalry with the queen? Charlene's ardor quickly cooled, however, when she saw Anthony returning classes. She immediately came to her senses and said that the cake would be ready soon. As the prince came closer, he saw the concern on the girl's face. He demanded that she tell him everything immediately. Charlene admitted that she wasn't okay. Anthony thanked her for the truth and asked her to leave the rest to her. Since the girl was his partner, he was responsible for making sure she was okay. 
The boy offered to take her to a secret place that only he came to. The children sat under the cover of night, gazing at the moon, the purple sky and the stars glowing in it. Charlene couldn't believe her eyes that there were such beautiful places in the world. She really didn't expect to be able to see the Milky Way like this. To her, everything that was happening was amazing. Anthony confessed that he always came here when he felt bad. Even if it was a dark night, there were always twinkling stars in the sky, which calmed him down a lot. Although Anthony was always attributed to darkness in the novel, his eyes radiated light. Charlene didn't know how anyone could dislike an angel like this boy. Gawking at the girl, Anthony asked if her mood had improved. Charlene laughed and said that she was happy from now on. Pointing her fingers at a very bright meteorite, Charlene asked Anthony to look at it and make a wish. The boy, however, turned to Charlene and said that she had never made a wish before while looking at shooting stars. Anthony had never heard falling fireflies called meteorites, but he liked the name very much. Charlene realized that if in the future she and Anthony parted ways, they could use these stars falling from the sky to find each other. Anthony got excited and said that their paths would never part. They would always be there for each other. He admitted that he really could never let her go again. Charlene became embarrassed. It was the first time a boy had ever said those words to her. An inner voice told her he was still a child. But what was she thinking? She realized she was a grown girl in real life, but waking up next to him, a boy she felt affection for, was a pleasure. Noticing the concern on the girl's face, Anthony asked what was wrong with her. She said she was fine, but really wanted to ask who was better at controlling the magic, him or Derek. Anthony's face drooped. He said he couldn't compare to his brother at all. Even though they were learning the same things, in neither's class they mostly learned common spells, but they were just spells. The boy had never been taught how to collect and use magic. Derek, on the other hand, had someone who had taught him. The power of passing was equivalent to internal magic. It was subject only to control, and there was no exact limit to the magic. Charlene suggested that Anthony find a way to study it together. It didn't matter if they started late. They could still catch up with his brother. Charlene lit up at the idea since Anthony was the strongest light mage. Magic flowed in his veins and he had to master it to ensure a happy future for himself and everyone else, which he failed to do in the novel. Walking up to Derek, a servant asked if there was anything he could do, placing Charlene's basket of flowers on the table. The prince asked Leo, the servant, not to look at him like that. He just thought that the girl must have lost the basket. He wanted to return it to her, but he thought such a late visit would be inappropriate. Leo asked his prince not to worry and offered to carry the basket himself. Derek interrupted his servant and told him he shouldn't do that, and ordered him not to say that he was the one who had asked the servant to carry the flowers back. The boy didn't want Charlene to find out about it. Unexpectedly, the queen entered the room with her servant. Derek immediately hid the basket of flowers under the table so his mother wouldn't see it. The queen approached her son and asked how he was doing. Pleased with the positive answer, she carefully stroked her boy's head and asked how the lessons on wielding magic with Sally's grandfather had gone. Derek happily replied that it was fine. Grandpa Sully said that he was very talented and would definitely excel in the future. The queen smiled wryly. The old man still remembered their pact together. The queen approached her son and praised him. As long as he had his mother, then he would always have the best in the world. But suddenly, she noticed the picture of flowers hidden under the table. Her expression immediately changed. The queen didn't let it show and said that it was late and it was time for Derek to go to bed and get a good night's rest. The boy wished his mother good night. When she left the room, the queen turned to her maid and asked her to find out how the basket had ended up in Derek's palace. The maid bowed obediently and agreed to fulfill her queen's request. Charlene and Anthony were looking at something in a book together, but they were abruptly interrupted by Theo, the butler, who burst into the room, shouting that the queen's maid was coming in with guards. Anthony turned to his companion and said that the maid was most likely Reese, the queen's confidant, whose arrival did not bode well. Charlene hugged her prince and assured him that all would be well. Reese entered the room accompanied by two knights and monotonously ordered Charlene to be brought to her. The two children immediately became excited. Anthony stood in front of the maid, spread his arms and said that Charlene was his companion and he had a right to know why Her Majesty would summon her. Reese in no way paid proper attention to the prince's words. 
She swung around and gave a hard slap to the second prince's small face. She didn't understand how such a universally disliked child had the right to defy the will of the queen. Charlene also ran up to Anthony, asking if she was all right. The prince, on the other hand, put his hands in a fist and said he was fine. Now was not the time to cross her. The queen couldn't stand it when things didn't go according to her plan. Charlene ran up to the maid and asked her to calm her anger. The girl obediently followed her to the queen. There was not a hint of fear on Charlene's face. She was definitely confident in her abilities and knew she would outplay the queen in all the mental games. Watching his companion and best friend being introduced, Anthony promised himself that one day he would give everyone back the humiliation he had endured throughout his life. The queen, looking at Charlene kneeling, tossed an empty flower basket in her direction, asking if it belonged to her. Charlene acknowledged that it was indeed her basket. She had met Derek one day, when she had finished picking flowers, and had most likely forgotten about the basket. But still, she didn't understand how this one ended up at the queen's house. Finally, all the while she guessed that Derek had taken the basket and the queen had found it in his possession. That's why she'd summoned her. The queen pointed her finger at Charlene and said she noticed the girl's boldness, but she also questioned the girl's false attempts to seduce Prince Derek. Of course, the queen thought about it. Except that Queen Audrey was wrong about one thing. Charlene would never try to seduce Derek, as Anthony seemed a much better man. However, Audrey came to that conclusion without asking Derek why he had the basket and what had happened in the garden. Charlene put on a smarmy face and told the queen that the basket did belong to her and she had lost it a few days ago. But she didn't know why it had ended up in Prince Derek's possession. If she had wanted Prince Derek's attention, she would have accepted the offer that day during the companion selection. Charlene bowed even more strongly to the queen and heartily asked her to find out the truth. In her experience, she knew that people who live in calculations could destroy themselves in an instant. The queen was mired in doubt. She asked the maid what she thought about it. Reese bowed her head and said that the girl's words could indeed be true. Queen Audrey ordered Charlene to get off her knees. She apologized for slandering her, but also ordered her to be more careful in the future. However, Charlene was not comforted by the queen's words and did not believe her. The queen threatened the girl to investigate and find out the truth anyway, but in the meantime, she ordered her to return to her chambers. Charlene graciously thanked her for being so lenient. Charlene walked out of the queen's chambers with a pleased expression on her face. Her plan had worked. For a while, they would be busy looking for this non-existent man, and in the meantime, she and Anthony could take advantage of the situation and find a way to do magic. Walking around the garden, Charlene thought about how to solve the problem with Anthony and teaching him magic. But suddenly her thoughts changed, and she realized that she needed to think of herself first. After all, there were three years left before she died. She could not be that frivolous. The girl came to her senses and realized she didn't know where she was. Reese had led her to the place, but she hadn't shown her how to get back. The palace was surprisingly huge, and she realized she was lost. Suddenly, Charlene didn't realize she was in an even stranger place. She was surrounded by white ruined buildings and huge columns all in cracks. In front of her stood a huge tree with pink flowers. It immediately caught her attention. The girl's eyes began to close. She unbearably wanted to sleep. She collapsed next to the roots of the tree and fell into a sweet sleep, forgetting all about time. Charlene opened her eyes reluctantly. Her drowsiness vanished when she saw that she was in a place she had never seen before. She was surrounded by small islands with golden doors and staircases levitating in the sky. The girl turned her head and saw sitting before her an exquisite girl with green hair holding a staff. The mysterious girl graciously admitted to being the spirit of books. Her name was Natalia. Charlene questioned the spirit, but she confirmed her words. All the spirits and all the books of the world belonged to her. That meant that she was the one who had sent Charlene to the inside of the novella. Natalia admitted that she had been deeply touched by Charlene's love for the characters in the book and was grateful. Charlene didn't know if sending her into the body of a little girl named Amelia could be considered gratitude on her part. Natalia said that according to the rules of the hit, if she could change Anthony's fate and survive, she could return home. After completing the task, Charlene only needed to clasp her hands together, close her eyes and say the words that this was the end of the story for the transition doors to her real world to open.
Natalia approached Charlene and said in other words that no author would have liked the plot inconsistencies. The short story was too boring, so the girl had to change it. The spirit of the books advised Charlene to keep at it and let her see how the storylines might change with her appearance. Charlene woke back up under the tree where she had fallen asleep a while ago. Her head hurt and she couldn't concentrate. But suddenly, she saw the sign Natalia had given her in her hand, and the girl realized that it was real, and it wasn't a dream. However, Charlene's thoughts were interrupted by a girl who appeared out of nowhere. She was accusing the girl of daring to invade the temple of the Divine Priestess. The girl was the incomparable noble Sophia, the Divine Priestess of the Ludwig Empire. Charlene immediately smiled upon seeing Sophia in front of her. This girl's personality in the novel was very interesting, and the girl couldn't wait to meet her. Sophia was the niece of the queen. Because of her unique talents and extraordinary magical abilities, she was chosen to be the goddess of the empire from early childhood. She was the pride of everyone. In the novel, Sophia fell in love with Anthony, but her personality and pride prevented her from loving the son of the devil, who was rejected by everyone. She was ashamed of her uncontrollable feelings, and in the end, without realizing it herself, ruined Anthony. Noticing the smile on Charlene's face, Sophia asked what the girl was laughing about. At this point in the events, Sophia had not yet become insane, and she was still a cranky child who set herself too high. At first, Charlene was scared that she was lost, but when Sophia appeared, her heart calmed down. It must have been because of her presence. The girl graciously apologized. Sophia waved her hand and said that Charlene didn't need to apologize. Charlene's eyes lit up, and she said that Sophia's talent and beauty had long since spread throughout the palace, but she had in no way expected her to be so beautiful. A girl like the divine priestess who combined beauty and talent was indeed enchanting. Sophia was embarrassed by Charlene's words. She said that since the girl had gotten lost and wasn't going to enter the temple, she wouldn't be angry with her. She also offered to guide her to the palace where she resided. It was the perfect moment to test her feelings for Anthony. Sophia folded her arms angrily and realized that Charlene lived in the second prince's palace and was his companion. Noticing Sophia's look, Charlene didn't realize it was a look of hostility. Now the priestess had thoughts of Anthony. In the world in which Charlene now resided, children were truly beyond their years. The temple priestess was loyal to the queen, and she knew something of her plan. Sophia's cheeks turned pink. Grasped, she recognized that none of this mattered. It wasn't so bad for Charlene to be his companion. Sophia was just a child and didn't yet know what evil was. Examining the butterfly on her finger, Sophia said that this butterfly was a guide. If Charlene followed it, she would definitely return to the castle. Following the butterfly, Charlene quickly returned to the castle. Everything that was happening was spiritual magic, which Sophia used. The girl joyfully entered the castle, but was immediately met by an excited Theo who was saying that there was an emergency in the castle. The second prince was very disturbed by the news when Charlene didn't come back for a long time, so he left half an hour ago and said he was going to rescue her. It wasn't that Charlene didn't know the second prince's situation. It wasn't that Anthony wasn't completely unable to protect himself himself. Charlene quickly pulled herself together. Theo said that Anthony went to look for her half an hour ago. With his speed, he shouldn't have gotten to the queen's castle yet. Charlene just needed to tell Anthony that she had returned safely, and he wouldn't be looking for the queen. However, there was no cell phone in this world, and Charlene didn't know how to let her prince know she was okay. Prince Derek arrived at the castle, accompanied by some servants. Walking around the castle grounds, Anthony's head was filled with the thought of saving his companion Charlene, even if he had to reveal his cards. Suddenly, he saw sparkling fireworks in the shape of stars above the castle. The boy immediately realized that this was a sign that the girl had returned safely. Anthony rushed to the castle and saw Charlene sitting on the steps. The girl ran up to the prince and asked if he had gone to see the queen. Anthony admitted that he wanted to go to her, but when he was approaching the entrance, he saw the signal and ran back. The second prince scared Charlene to death. She didn't understand how he could smile so calmly after what had happened. Anthony carefully leaned his hand on Charlene's hair and said that when you feel that someone cares about you, you feel great. He also noted that the signal looming over the castle roof was a fireworks spell. The second prince asked how Charlene was able to make it. The girl said that it was actually Derek who caused the fireworks. She asked him for a favor. 
showing him the scroll with the runes, and he, after a little thought, agreed to do such a favor for the girl. He was a shallow kid, and it was out of his hands to help everyone else. The girl said that since the first prince would help her this time, she would help him in the future, without asking for a reason. They struck hands and made such a peculiar deal. Sitting on the sofa next to Charlene, Anthony realized that his companion in the future must also pay back his brother. This thought did not make him happy at all. Looking into the prince's eyes, Charlene noticed that he was greatly displeased and jealous of her for his brother. Anthony did admit that he was very displeased and said that the girl could only do things with him. Charlene pushed Anthony away a bit, realizing that it was just flirting that had just occurred. Anthony asked what really happened. The girl said that even though she knew the second prince was worried about her, she still rushed to the queen. Anthony understood the full implications and knew he had a trump card and he wasn't afraid of her at all. Charlene paid strong attention to her companion's words. Had she missed something in the plot? What trump cards could the second prince have against the queen? But Anthony said that his trump card was himself. The queen suppressed and bullied Anthony, but she still didn't kill him. With her disgust and monstrous power, it was by no means because she was heartless. It was because Anthony had some value to her, and he couldn't be replaced by anyone else. Charlene hadn't even expected the fact that Anthony could analyze such things in such a way. Understanding the overall situation, judgment, and the science of introducing games made Anthony as powerful as the devil. The second prince said that if the queen really treated Charlene badly, he would do what he had to do. Charlene hugged Anthony and said that no one would ever dare do anything to them. She was sure that the two of them would be fine forever. Together with their intrigues in the palace, they would definitely become champions in palace battles. The girl also added that if it wasn't for Derek's help, she wouldn't have been able to give Anthony the information and he would have never revealed his cards. Anthony admitted that they had too few resources at their disposal right now. The most important thing at the moment was information. Regardless of what era Charlene was now living in, information was crucial, which was why it was so necessary. The children guessed that they needed to set up an intelligence network to keep up with all the events in the castle. The prince's companion said that didn't they have the same idea? That she should be the one to handle all matters. Anthony asked if the girl already had any powerful ideas. Charlene confidently answered in the affirmative and said that she had one great one. Charlene gathered all the servants of the castle near the gazebo. She had interesting conversations with them to get them on her side. To gather information, the girl spent this night meeting telling different stories. The servants were eagerly waiting for the continuation of the story that Charlene was now telling them. Thanks to her past life, Charlene had accumulated quite a few stories and had finally found a moment during which she could use them all to her advantage. Charlene also knew not to underestimate the servants. The gossip they carelessly talk about could be the next hotspot. Charlene told the servants not to get depressed by an underdried story. All of life, in fact, is far more exciting. It was better for everyone to talk about what was around them, and then everyone would be able to discover new insights. The enthusiastic servants agreed with the words of their little mistress. They were overwhelmed with joy when she said something in her high, childlike voice. Charlene took her head tiredly. She thought she could extract the clues and gossip of the servants and find great material. But who knew their daily topic was only one? Charlene's reputation as a public relations queen in real life should have helped her with that, but alas, it didn't help her. Suddenly, one of the servants shouted out that he had seen a plant called Morning Glory grow from the height of a tree and the size of an umbrella. N saw that it was Earl Mohanka who had applied magic to the Morning Glory plant and was reading a book underneath it. Charlene reflected that if it was Earl Mohanka, it would make sense. Even though he was young and sickly, the servant had heard that his magical abilities were unfathomable. Earl was Dean Sally's son, and it was not unusual for him to possess such powerful magic. In the novel, Earl was a friend of the heroine and was an extremely harmful character. Mohanka was powerful, except that he died of an illness very early on. At the present time, Earl and the princess still hadn't met, and Charlene had an idea for the occasion. Charlene approached Ellie's maid and asked her for a favor. She leaned over to the maid and whispered something in her ear. Ellie immediately became indignant and asked if Charlene was mocking her. Bright stars could be seen above Dean Sally's estate. Through the open window, a young boy could be seen hanging out in the library. 
Breaking away from the book, Mohanka felt something wrong. He felt a sudden pain and looked up at the stars through the window. He didn't have as much time as his father had predicted. In his room in the morning, Anthony couldn't get used to the new clothes Charlene had asked him to put on. It was rather strange. Charlene's wish to dress up her prince had come true. The clothes were so uncomfortable for him because it was a tunic that she had personally designed. It was a design from her hometown, and she didn't know if the prince liked it. Leaning over, Anthony noticed Charlene's pretty face. It was so pretty and warm that Anthony couldn't even shift his gaze. Again, the two were interrupted by the butler bursting into the room, announcing that the goddess Sophia had come to the castle. Theo marveled at such a romantic atmosphere between the two boys. Anthony said he heard the butler. Charlene, on the other hand, ran along with the butler and said she wanted to see it too. Following his companion, Anthony smiled and noticed how embarrassed she was. Charlene approached Sophia and said that His Highness the Second Prince would be here soon and asked Sophia to wait a little while. However, the priestess stated that she had not come to the castle to meet the prince. However, the girl noticed that Sophia's gaze was still coming to the entrance of Anthony's room. She didn't know if there was anything useful about the goddess's visit to the palace. The prince walked into the room and didn't realize what was happening before his eyes. The priestess was immediately embarrassed when she saw the second prince in front of her, but she quickly pulled herself together and said that there would be a prayer meeting soon and she would be in charge of preparing for the event. She wanted Charlene to come to the temple to help her. Anthony stood beside his friend and declared that she was not a servant at all, but his companion. The prayer meeting was a gathering of the gods. The priestess paid no attention to the prince's words, as the queen had told Sophia so she could choose people without titles at her personal will. Besides, it really ticked her off that the prince cared so much about Charlene. Anthony loomed over Sophia and questioned her in a serious tone if she really wanted to gather Charlene from him. A far unfriendly atmosphere immediately loomed between the two that made even Charlene uneasy. Turning to the girl, the two asked what she thought. Charlene, smiling, said that Her Highness Goddess could invite his royal his being Anthony to the meeting to help, and she could accompany him. In fact, Sophia wanted Charlene to go with her, not for help, but to learn more about Anthony through her. It would have been sacrilegious of her to turn down such an opportunity to make direct contact with the prince. Anthony and Sophia wound up being fine with such a compromise. Charlene smiled as she looked at Sophia. She hadn't turned into a distraught girl yet, and so she had one tricky idea about her. Seeing Anthony in the temple in front of her, Sophia couldn't tear herself away from his eyes. They seemed so beautiful and mesmerizing to her that she drowned in them and could think of nothing else. Charlene decided to let Sophia and Anthony too have a closer contact and get to know each other better first. She was going to guide Sophia to establish the right points of view. Perhaps she would become a member of Anthony's camp in the future. Looking into Sophia's eyes, Anthony asked what they needed to do. Sophia replied that he needed to close his eyes. Sophia, seeing the confused look on Anthony's face, began to berate herself for saying such a strange thing, but she was the goddess of the kingdom and could not admit she was wrong. She stated that Anthony was in the Temple of Light, being the son of the devil, and therefore he was obligated to hide his eyes. Anthony pulled away. His friendly expression immediately changed. He asked Sophia in a low tone if she had brought him to the temple on purpose to humiliate him. Sophia did not retract her words. Suddenly, Derek entered the temple accompanied by his servants. Charlene and Sophia immediately questioned the prudence of Derek's presence in the temple. They were not particularly happy to see him. There was a long-standing feud between Derek and Sophia. There was a mutual dislike between them that they weren't afraid to hide. Sophia reminded the first principal that he didn't like coming to the temple at all, and asked him what brought him here today. Derek, however, could come anywhere at any time. Early in the morning, the queen sat next to her son and said that if he didn't have so many school things to do, he could see Sophia more often at the temple to play with her. Derek didn't like that idea. Sophia seemed boring to him and no fun at all. The queen stated that Sophia was a goddess of the kingdom of noble bloods, and she was gifted enough to be Derek's friend and have the benefit of it in the future. Realizing how hard it was with his mother sometimes, Derek quickly agreed with what she said, so as to avoid any further lectures. In any case, Derek was already at the temple. He didn't understand why Anthony and Charlene were here as well. 
Charlene bowed and said that they were in the temple to help the goddess prepare for the moon festival. Suddenly, Anthony noticed his brother's clothes. It struck him as very beautiful. He had never seen something like it before. Anthony moved forward to his brother and began to secretly brag, saying that Charlene had designed it herself. His new clothes were one of a kind. Derek's eyes lit up. He wanted the exact same set of clothes. The prince began begging his brother to have his companion make him one just like it. Snorting angrily, Sophia stated that all people were in the divine temple and should observe complete silence. Taking his brother and his companion by the hands, Derek suggested they go outside and talk there before some stereotypical little witch interrupted all the fun. Left alone, Sophia decided to approach the tree under which Charlene had recently fallen into slumber. The priestess began to complain to all the gods that she couldn't resist Anthony's eyes. They seemed unrealistically beautiful to her, like gems. However, she also knew that his eyes were filled with evil, so she felt guilty. Sophia thought that after today, the second prince began to hate her even more. The priestess was beginning to regret that she had allowed herself to speak such words in his direction. Suddenly, the priestess was interrupted by someone's voice saying that Sophia was not at fault at all. It was the fault of an overly selfish queen. Sophia immediately turned around, preparing to attack. Sophia turned around sharply and saw Charlene in front of her. The priestess angrily asked if she had overheard her. Charlene smiled kindly and said that she only wanted to give something to Sophia and didn't mean to eavesdrop at all. The gift was a dress she had made especially for her. The priestess grudgingly hummed and said she wasn't as stupid as Derek to be pleased with some costume. She added that Charlene had better explain herself and admit what she meant when she said that Sophia was too selfish. Charlene said that Sophia was the goddess of the kingdom and was trying to bring her words and actions in line with what was expected of a goddess, and she was actually suffering in silence. When Sophia's feelings clashed with the rules of the world, it was natural for her to speak out of turn. Sophia was still arrogant and haughty, but in fact was also secretive about her feelings and sensations. It must have been very tiring to take on so much when the priestess was still so and young. Charlene advised her not to try to be so serious. She also offered a hug to comfort Sophia at least a little. Sophia gladly agreed to Charlene's offer. She was so lonely at times that she often couldn't deal with her feelings. She was so lacking in support. Finally, she had someone in her life that she could confide in. Sophia hugged Charlene tightly, feeling tears begin to flow down her cheeks. Charlene pulled Sophia closer to her and advised her to let go of her identity status and treat people with a sincere, good-natured heart. That way, she would feel much better and could finally find herself. Prince Derek was happy with his new suit that Charlene had made for him. Anthony and Charlene herself were happy to see a smile on the first prince's face. Derek, for such a beautiful gift on behalf of the girl, offered to give her some sort of award. Anthony immediately interrupted him, saying that Charlene was his companion and the first prince should not make contact with her. Anthony shifted his gaze to his companion and firmly said that whatever she wants, he will give it to her. Charlene felt butterflies in her stomach from such beautiful words of the prince. Seeing all three of them in the garden, Sophia approached the company wearing a new dress that Sophia had made for her. It was the first time she had worn it and she wasn't used to it yet. Derek immediately became nervous and asked the priestess why she was dressed like that. Sophia immediately became embarrassed and inwardly thought to herself that she shouldn't have listened to Sharon put on such a strange dress. Sharon took the priestess by the hand and said that she looked just lovely, more lovely than ever. Even Derek recognized the fact that the priestess had looked very severe before. He didn't think she would look so beautiful in her new outfit. Sophia and Derek hated each other, so if he said the priestess's new outfit was good, that meant it was true. Charlene was right about her. Sophia approached Anthony and suggested that he remember Charlene's words about being sincere and equal to others. So she said that she was sorry for her words that she had said yesterday about him. The priestess sincerely apologized to the prince. Derek's eyes widened. He certainly hadn't expected the fact that the priestess knew how to apologize. The prince jokingly suggested that Sophia was possessed by an evil spirit. Charlene instantly interrupted the prince. The girl said that although Derek was a kind and sweet man, he shouldn't treat a girl who had to be serious because of her job. Now that there were no outsiders around, it would be easy for Sophia to reveal her true nature. Derek listened carefully to Charlene and realized that he had spoken inappropriately. 
Anthony approached Sophia and took her by the shoulders, telling her that he wasn't offended by her. The girl thanked him, noticing that he was smiling at her for the first time. For such a beautiful moment in her life, she idolized Charlene. With her palms folded contentedly, Charlene was glad that all misunderstandings had been cleared up. From now on, there was an addition to their little group. Sophia had joined them. Derek stepped forward, saying that everyone here was of the same age and suggested that they not be ceremonious in private. He stated that from now on, friends should call each other by their first names. Everyone present agreed, but Sophia added that they should be careful when there were strangers around. Charlene made the decision to cut to the chase. They were to start by helping Sophia prepare for the Moon Festival. Everyone else was all for it. They were all on the same side now and had an obligation to help each other. All the joy overflowing from the children was watched by the queen's maid, Rose. She noticed that Charlene didn't have any protection. Even if she couldn't get rid of her, she would have to make her suffer. Charlene and Anthony strolled through the night garden. The girl recognized that it had been a long day, and they were all tired. However, the other prince was happy about today, and he didn't feel tired at all. Suddenly, Charlene and Anthony felt dizzy because of the faint smoke that filled the garden. They immediately sensed something wrong as their heads began to hurt. The children collapsed to the ground. Then a masked silhouette ran up to Charlene, grabbed her and carried her off to an unknown destination. Charlene woke up in a dark room that looked like a basement. She was awakened by cold water poured on her from a bucket. Her head ached. The toxins that had entered her system through the smoke were taking their toll. Charlene was approached by Reese. She monotonously told the girl not to even dare to forget her low status, even being a worker for the queen. A great prince and a goddess were not tops for Charlene. Charlene bowed to the queen's personal servant. She realized that Reese had said such things since she had seen her along with the rest of the guys naively playing around. Apparently, taking Charlene away was the maid's personal business. Reese, twirling the mysterious magical orb in her hands, pronounced that she had seen a lot of little brats like Charlene in her life. Reese didn't like her and realized that the girl wouldn't learn anything until she taught her a lesson. The closer Reese brought the orb closer to Charlene, the more the girl felt agony throughout her body. The nightmare spell, the maid intended, was to make Charlene recall the most painful memories over and over again. Anthony woke up in his room. His head still ached unbearably. However, the ever-smiling Theo forced the prince to come to his senses. He was very glad that his master had come to his senses. Anthony immediately jumped up from the bed, asking the butler where Charlene was. Theo said he was worried that the prince and his companion had been gone for a long time and went to the temple to look for them. On his way there, he saw Anthony sleeping alone on the stove without Miss Charlene. Anthony got to his feet and rushed out to look for Charlene. Theo tried to hold him off, but his attempts were futile. Trying to stay conscious, Anthony made his way through the smoke, realizing that there had to be some clues nearby. In front of him, near a young tree, the prince saw Charlene, who was clearly not feeling her best. Anthony ran up to the girl and grabbed her cold hands, questioning her as to what had happened to her. Charlene, through a wild urge to faint, whispered that she was fine, though a little tired. Anthony carefully placed his hand in Charlene's hair and asked how long she was going to lie since he'd noticed her condition. Noticing that Charlene was starting to faint, Anthony picked her up in his arms and rushed her somewhere. Charlene couldn't believe that a legendary princess rescue was happening right now, just like in the fairy tales. Anthony brought Charlene instead of where he was always locked up by himself, alone with his favorite flower that he couldn't take his eyes off of the whole time. Anthony stated that he hated to show his weakness. It was only an unintentional forgiveness of harm. If the prince was unable to resist, then he had to hide. When Anthony felt vulnerable, he felt more at ease when no one was watching. However, last time, Charlene still managed to uncover his secret. Charlene apologized, but Anthony interrupted her, saying that all he wanted to say was that right now it was just him and her in this place. He didn't care if Charlene showed his weakness, he promised to always be there for her until she was better, just as she was with him. Sherry didn't understand how it was that the baby made her feel safe. She clung to Anthony as tightly as she could. The other prince put his arm around Charlene and told her in her ear that everything was okay. He was there for her. Wiping away her tears, Charlene said that she felt better now. Who knew that the great public relations queen would be sobbing in the arms of a baby?
Charlene admitted to Anthony that the Queen wanted to make a deal with her, and she also said that it was nothing to worry about. It was Reese who was displeased with her, and willingly ordered her to be taken away to teach her a lesson in such a horrible way, tormenting her with nightmares. Anthony opened his eyes wide and asked what the Queen's personal maid had managed to do to Charlene. The girl began her story, starting with the fact that Reese had locked her in and cast a dream spell. Anthony clenched his hands into a fist with anger. He swore to himself that he would not forgive Reese for what she had done. Ellie walked around the night garden with Charlene, saying that tonight's story would be as successful as the last one. Charlene grimaced and said that she was probably right. The maid noticed that Charlene had been acting strangely lately. Her aura was in darkness. However, the prince's companion wouldn't admit it and said she just hadn't been sleeping well. Ellie decided not to back down and wanted to cheer up her mistress. The maid decided to tell Charlene a funny story. It turns out that Mistress Reese had a terrible embarrassment today. She was stung by a bee this afternoon. Because of the commotion, Reese fell to the ground and a swarm of bees came straight at her. A look of joy flashed across Charlene's face. Ellie said that the story was completely true. Reese was cruel, no one loved her. She was getting a lot of abuse today, and everyone behind her back was just laughing. Charlene had read in Anthony's book that the bee swarms on the continent were very poisonous but didn't actively attack. She had always thought that was strange. Ellie and Charlene arrived on the scene. The prince's companion thanked the maid for escorting her. Charlene's plan was not to say anything to Anthony until she had established an agent network. Then, he would be very pleasantly surprised. The girl collapsed into her bed, hoping she would get a good night's sleep tonight. Charlene had nightmares about her past again. She remembered a scene from her childhood. She had seen with her own eyes the corpse of her father and her mother, who had committed suicide by hanging, lying in her house. The policewoman led Charlene by the hand, telling the girl that she should understand what the girl had been through. The uniformed woman thanked the girl for her willingness to adopt Charlene. The girl, however, understood that the birth mother suffered from bipolar disorder and had killed her husband during a seizure and then committed suicide. The girl felt very sorry for Charlene and was going to take good care of her. The sweet girl approached Charlene and said that she would be her mom from now on and her son standing next to her would be her brother. Unfortunately, the new brother was no protector at all for Charlene. He liked to bully her in every way possible. He got into the habit of beating her, tying her up, damaging her things. Charlene begged him to stop abusing her, but the guy liked to torture her and watch her cry. Anthony approached Charlene, who was clearly going through a nightmare. He leaned against her forehead and inadvertently woke her up. Anthony told the girl that the consequence of the spell was nightmares for two weeks. He had originally wanted to use calming magic to ease his companion's sorrow, but it seemed that knowledge would not be enough, and so he simply woke her to interrupt the torment. Charlene didn't understand how this was possible, but feeling better now that she saw Anthony in front of her. At some point, she realized that she felt much happier in the world of the book than she did in real life. Every day, she felt less and less like leaving it. Anthony urged his companion not to worry. He promised that he would grow up quickly and try to become stronger, not letting anyone hurt her. Though Charlene imagined someone would one day say those words to her, Anthony was just a child. She still didn't know what she should do. Charlene remembered Ellie's words about Reese being stung by a poisonous bee. She wondered if Anthony had handled it. The second prince decided not to hold back and said he couldn't fight with magic directly right now. But since the harmful maid had allowed herself to be abused by Charlene, he couldn't close his eyes to what had happened. Before the moon ceremony, the goddess was handing out blessings to the servants. There was nothing special about the aroma of the incense, but if you added clover to it, it would be incredibly attractive to bees. That's what Anthony used when he added the mixture to Reese's lunch. 